I'm here this morning uh, with what I believe is an important message. But before I get into the substance of my message, I want to speak to teachers in this province. The reason that we are doing this, and it is not my intent to bargain in the media, but my intent is to ensure that the misinformation that I believe has been communicated by the BCTF is set straight. And again, I'm not trying to be uh, disingenuous with the BCTF, but I believe as the minister uh, responding on behalf of the government and the premier of this province, that I have a responsibility to ensure that the facts are clearly laid on the table so that everyone understands where we are and where we need to go in order to get an agreement. To every teacher in this province, I clearly recognize that you're losing wages. I've heard the stories about food banks being set up to help teachers get over this time. To even suggest that that is something that does not affect us as government and myself personally as the minister is not the case. Uh, I fully understand the impact. But I also clearly understand that if we are going to get an agreement, the BCTF has to become realistic. And I say to every teacher, and I'm well aware of some information that was sent out by your union to you yesterday, we are not even close in where we need to be in order to get a negotiated agreement. Now, I know clearly that the BC School Employers Association has been working very hard to bridge the gap between the demands that were put on the table by the BCTF and those which uh, they representing the employers and the government feel is affordable for taxpayers. And the key here is we believe that teachers deserve a raise we believe that we need to find a path to settlement on some of the other outstanding issues. And on Sunday, after a weekend of discussions with government and with the employers group, we tabled a comprehensive proposal that addressed what was a fair wage offer to all of the teachers in the province and that also matched what other public sector unions, over 150,000 employees represented by them, have received so far. We also tabled at that time funding that would start to deal significantly with the issues of class composition and class size. I need to say clearly that that package was not tabled lightly. It took a lot of work. It took a lot of looking at the implications, as I said, first and foremost to other public sector unions that we've settled with, but also, and the government's responsibility is while we recognize that teachers deserve a raise, we also recognize it has to be affordable for taxpayers. We want to conclude this round of bargaining by the end of June. That is one of the reasons that a signing bonus was put on the table as part of the negotiations leading up to what happened on the weekend. We sincerely hoped, and I can tell you, that after our last conversation on Sunday afternoon and when the BCPC went in with that comprehensive package, uh, I sat at the table with my grandchildren who were in public school. And uh, my one, Grant's grandson said to me, excuse me, he said to me, he said, Papa, are, are we going to go back to school? I said, you know, I really hope we can say that we will. He said to me, well, you know what, we're okay. <laughs> we kind of like the time off. But I had a real chat with them, and I said, this isn't about giving you time off or not. It's about finding a settlement that is appropriate for everyone. I was optimistic Sunday night that 
BCTF would come back on Monday morning with uh, a response, filling in the blanks on their proposal at that time so that we could actually do a comprehensive costing. And um, what we found was that on Monday morning, Mr. Eicher went before his membership in an online event that he invited the media to and uh, clearly said that uh, the government and BCPC had squandered an opportunity for a settlement. And I was shocked with that message. I had hoped they would come back to the bargaining table with something that would move us closer. And what you see beside me here in the chart is you clearly see the other workers in the sectors, nurses, uh, other people that we still have to negotiate with, but the people we've already settled with, including support workers who provide support to teachers in classrooms, to students. And we were able to negotiate a settlement that was fair for them and affordable for taxpayers. But you can clearly see what is there is that by the time we do the costing on the last offer, and that does not include some of the uh, other proposals that they put on the table when it relates to size and composition, that there is a significant gap that still exists. The affordability zone is clearly indicated by all of the other representatives of public sectors uh, that are there. And you can see that the BCTF is clearly in a zone of their own. That is not affordable. It is not realistic, and we need to recognize that when we can negotiate deals with 150,000 public sector employees, and in the case of CUPE, with support workers for the education system in five days, why can't we do that? Well, one of the reasons is the other party has to be closer to what is realistic and affordable. We want to provide the teachers of this province with a settlement. We want to continue and move towards an education system that has long-term stability. But I can tell you that it's clear to me that the BCTF wants to stay in their own orbit. They don't want to recognize the realities of our economy, of the needs of taxpayers, and their compensation demands are twice what the other unions have settled for. And we cannot, on behalf of taxpayers, afford that and to see us caught in a place where we are disingenuous to the previous settlements and those that are still to come. Um, to say that I'm disappointed is an understatement. I'm profoundly disappointed. On behalf of the Premier and the government, and we've had many discussions about this, we respect the role that teachers play in our society and the importance of education, but not at the expense of everything else that we as government have to do, whether it's health care, social services. And we have a fundamental commitment as government to balance the budget, to ensure we keep our economy moving ahead so we can afford future investments in all of those vital sectors. We want a settlement that's fair for teachers, but we also want a settlement that's fair for the taxpayers. And we need to be fair to every other employee in this province who provides valuable services. And I want to say this clearly. We want an agreement by June 30th of this year. We want an agreement by June 30th. And I can clearly say, and I will say, we are not interested in legislating the teachers back to work. That is a pattern that we've seen far too long, and we are not interested in doing that. If we bring this agreement to the table, then we can move ahead and deal with a lot of the other vital issues in education. How long this dispute lasts is entirely in the hands of the BCTF. And I can tell you 
that we do not want this to drift into the summer and potentially affect summer school. We do not want it to extend into the fall. But we are not prepared to legislate and to find ourselves forcing a settlement that is not in line with the other settlements that I've spoken about. I also want to say to parents and grandparents that I know this has been hard on you. And I know the prospect of going into the summer without a, an agreement is hard because of the uncertainty for the fall. But we really believe that we need to stay the course on behalf of you as taxpayers and parents because we cannot continue this cycle of disruption. So the teachers, again, there is a signing bonus on the table. We want an agreement by the end of June. We ask you to speak to your leadership to say, come into the affordability zone. Give us all the facts. And that's one of the reasons we're putting this information out there. And I sincerely hope that the next press conference that I have is celebrating an agreement that we've negotiated at the table with the BCTF. And we want to continue to reinforce that we want an affordable settlement, but a fair settlement, and one that sets us on a path to stability for the future.